everybody and welcome back to the channel. So we are just east of La Crosse, Indiana today and we're going to be uh, taking down some buildings. We're going to be doing a little demolition. The building's in pretty rough shape. It don't look like it from the outside but it's in pretty bad shape. So we're going to take the old 220 here. cigarette lighter that's all I need so it's actually wood underneath the tin so what we're gonna do is we're gonna burn it and then we'll uh, pick the tin out to try to salvage some of the round poles that this building's made out of. Uh, use them for corner posts and stuff for my cattle operation, for fence. some corn picking together and things like that. I've helped him with some of his muck ground. Let's see if I can get that. There we go. That looks like a pretty good bowl. Rub some of that wood off of it. Nah, that, one's, that one's got a bow to it. I don't know. We'll, we'll save that one for further review.
Josh is pretty good at burning cow mines. I wonder how good he is at burning buildings. <laughs> That's terrible. I don't want to knock that off there. Gotta get that bucket tooth on there just right. Oh, come on. Well, darn it. There we go. That's what I wanted.
I got all these poles cut up that I wanted. Some of them I threw back in because they weren't very big. Like that one, that one's, that one's junk. I don't need that. Oh, that fire's burning. That's pretty hot. kind of small. We're going to throw him back in. That's a good one.
There you go, George. There's your door. Well, let's see what we can do with this building. I already took a bite out of the roof. Let's see if we can take a whole end wall. thing is here. Looks kind of interesting. We're going to throw it out. It's like some kind of basket with springs on it. I'll gently pinch it. I don't know. It's kind of odd. I don't want to crush it. Eh, I crushed it a little bit, but I don't know what that thing is. It's like made to snap shut. I'll set that out by the toilet for now. Well, we're going in for the last piece. And then the silage would come out and it would be drugged through under this roof and then the cows would come up here and eat. There are a couple farms on YouTube that I've seen that uh, actually still use the same system to this day. I mean, it's not an outdated thing. But just this this particular farm don't use it. TMR mixers and, and mixers on the trucks kind of took the place of these systems. And a lot of guys don't store silage in silos anymore. They, they use ground piles. So these are kind of a thing of the past. But like I said, some farms still use them. It's, a pretty, it's pretty cool how it works. Scrap 
this angle here. Got to bust that wood up there. There we of them out when I bust the concrete up. All this all this concrete gets broke up. This building over here stays. Just that big building was leaking so bad and the poles were rotted off and just it wasn't worth it wasn't worth keeping. You could go in and concrete new poles in behind or beside the old ones, but with the roof leaking like it was, when we looked at it to give an estimate on it, it was raining that day, and it was just just raining like terrible inside the building. So it just wasn't worth keeping. Plus, it's in the way of them farming this farm. the other building will come down also. So we're going to start cleaning some of this concrete up now. Not sure what we're going to get into in this pad here. It's going to have a sand core I'm pretty sure, but it's going to be interesting to see what is in that sand core. Full of big rocks, chunks of concrete, what, what's in there, so we'll find out here. Looks like the blocks are filled with concrete. Hopefully we can load this out without making a big mess. Stopped and greased my thumb and my bucket. There is a footing under this we're going to have to dispose of also.
camera a little bit, don't I? That's better. Bobcat and rake around that fire if you want to. I did. Fast side of the fast side. Alright. so it'll come out from under the tailgate. Don't want to get stuck in the tailgate. and recycled into either riprap or driveway stone. I guess it's not all concrete, some of it's cinder block. fertilizer in, bag starter fertilizer for when they plant corn is what this was actually used for. Basically they had basically their own loading dock. They'd back their truck up to the door and they would uh, load their fertilizer out in the morning or I guess throughout the day when they were planting corn. And then he said it was a, uh, a warehouse for seed corn at one time. So that's why this building's designed the way it is. All right, now I'm gonna bust some pieces up to finish filling the truck. Gonna have to get my wrecking ball back from the cup of mat. Wrecking ball is a very effective way of breaking up concrete. I seen Let's Dig 18 using one on one of his videos a couple weeks ago. 
That's a smaller ball than what I have. Mine's like 3,500 pounds. see what we can do with this oh my gosh look at the mice no more mice I had never seen so many mice in my life that was a lot of mice tough about bidding projects like this with foundations like these is you never know what's going to be inside of them. They could have piled a bunch of concrete up and then put fill dirt in and then poured over it. You just never know. So you kind of got to bid you a little cushion in there for at least, you know, a little bit extra concrete, like a half a load or so. So if you do run into that problem, you're, you're covered. Oh, wrong pile. What am I doing? Well, we're going to start sorting some of this tin out. And other metal that we find. continue to burn the 
it's in there. By the time I move it around and put it in the truck, all the ashes will come out of it. through it looking for things using my thumb and bucket to rake through everything burned up real good there's still a few chunks of poles here and there but getting this metal raked up here quit for the night. Gonna fluff it up a little bit. Make sure that all the burnables are exposed so they can burn, they're not buried in the ash. them little chunks up real nice. Go around the other side and break that around a little bit. Loading another load of concrete out when Dad gets back, and I think that's going to be it for today. Well, we're on day two of this project. Well, we actually got started about, oh, 11 a.m. yesterday, so not full days. But uh, the next day, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to take this tin and we're going to start packing it in the truck so it can go to the uh, scrap yard. Everything burn up real nice. I, I kept scattering it out last night. So if there's any chunks of wood, they would keep burning. Let's go ahead this morning and uh, start packing it in the truck. 
see how many loads we got. Hopefully we can get it all in one load. Most of the time I can. By the time I pack it in there, it turns into a nice cube. Dad parked the truck the other way. But I can always get behind it and pack it in. Try not to grab big wads of it so that ashes will come out. Like to take it as clean as possible. couple chunks of poles that didn't burn. Packing this in, you kind of got the idea what I'm going to do here. I don't have to make a whole video of it. The video is already long as it is. I think there's going to be two loads. Well, since all we have left is basically ashes and some nails and stuff, I'm just going to rake all this to one side. I got to get a little more metal out of this, but. I'm gonna rake all these ashes to one side and then I'm just going to dig a uh, shallow hole 
not going to go super deep and I'm just going to bury all the ash that's left. That way all the nails and all that are, are buried and out of sight and out of mind. They'll rust eventually and go away. Must have had a lime compacted floor at one time in this building. There is a lot of lime down there. I mean, there's a few chunks of wood in that, but it's nothing that's going to be a issue to bury. You just don't want to bury big chunks of like stumps and logs and things like that that can rot and cause a major cavity underground. something that could ever affect you running a tile. Like if you plowed through this or what I'm going to bury, it's not going to stop the tile plow. Yeah, you might pull up a few chunks of ashes or something like that, but you're not going to get stopped dead in your tracks like if you buried a, a big stump or something like that. is pretty much dirt anyway so it's not like it's gonna rot any farther than what it already is so it's not gonna cause a cavity underground you know out in Iowa <coughs> there was a crane they were doing a sol solar farm and a big crane was uh, going to the next no it wasn't a solar farm it was a windmill farm going to the next windmill to set it up and went across where somebody had buried an old homestead and they had just buried the house. They didn't burn it. They did nothing. They just buried it. Well, it rotted underground, caused a cavity. Crane went over that spot and a uh, crane actually fell in the hole and it flipped over and when it flipped over, the counterweights came over the cab and killed the operator. So that's why I don't like to bury stuff like that because you never know what might go on later in years and something like that could happen and somebody could lose their life over it. So it's just not worth, it's not worth doing that. There's a ground rod right here I need to dig out. There you go. Oh, and there's another post. I'm gonna have to go around here and make sure all the posts are popped out also. What we'll do is we'll put the grapples on and will rake really good. And now that'll, that'll pop out any posts that might be left or any chunks of concrete. And when we're all said and done, we'll just take these chunks of posts home and we'll, we'll burn them, finish burning them in our brush pile. We still have that pile to burn from all that stuff we hauled home from Bass Lake, all that brush. And of course, there's going to be a few things to pick up. A few chunks of wood and things like that. But we also got the skeleton bucket here on the Bobcat. That George brought it with. So we've got that. So we'll break through when we're all done. Go ahead and start digging me a hole. extremely deep basically it's gonna be like a crawl space so we don't want to get it in the water table or anything like that we just want enough that we can get rid of the ashes and be deep enough that they don't get in it with a ripper if that is lime which it does definitely look like lime they ain't gonna have to lime this area for a while Yeah, that's lime. That's limestone right there. Well, that ground got warm.
I'll do is I'll basically just take my bucket after we get this all uh, buried and I'll just go over the rest of the area and just kind of roll the dirt. Work that lime in some, grate it off the bobcat and it'll be good. when I go different places and dig like here there's no gravel it is just dirt and sand I hear some clay in it I think that's about as deep as I'm gonna go it's really all we need my ditch bucket. It's basically a dig around a long rectangle. Dirt's kind of heavy. why they can get a hundred bushel beans up here. Got some good dirt. Not like our sand from back home. this size and I think we'll have it. Now the concrete behind me, the old feed bunk, we're not going to tear that out at this time. We're going to leave that for now until we have time to haul it out. They just wanted to get this building and the other building out of the way so it was out of the way for farming. Like I said, the buildings were in bad shape anyways. They weren't worth keeping. They had thought about re recovering them but they're just just wasn't worth it. Nobody lives at this farm anyways, so there's nobody to watch over things. And they've got other large buildings, so it's just time to get rid of these. Been nice to save them, but you can't save them all. Oh, well, now that I got my whole duck, we'll just slide some of this off in there. As you can see, it's, it's it's just ash. Nothing really in it. A few splinters of wood. The cab air filter is really going to like that being on that side. time for a service anyways so get a new one for it
I will say that this cab is very sealed up. I don't get ash in the cab unless I have the front window open. I will give Hyundai that. They do make a very nice cab. Once I get this scooted in there, then I'll work it down in the hole. load and we should have that metal gone. Be interesting to see how much weight was in that truck. It's kind of deceiving. You think, oh, there can't be that much in there, and then you get the weight ticket, and it's like, wow. Actually got quite a bit in there. Nowhere near overloaded or anything, but I mean, you're like, ah, oh, it probably only weighs, you know, a couple ton, and it's sometimes more a ton or so more than you thought. Like I said, we don't we don't really haul it in to make money. We haul it in to get rid of it so we don't, you know, there's no sense in burying that when that can be a recyclable. cardboard that didn't burn. Alright, I'm not going to mess with that until I get the rest of that metal out of there. So, we're pretty much done here with the big building. I'm just going to mix this up a little more right here in this spot. Get some of that lime that was in the floor worked in. Josh is running the Bobcat. He's doing pretty good with it, really, for his pretty much his first time on a good-sized project. He has run skid steers before, but uh, he said he's never really been on a project where he's had a pretty large goal like this project here. So he's doing really good. And the way that I teach guys is I just turn them loose and let them learn the machine and you know, make sure they're not going to hurt themselves or anybody and just let them learn it. And then I watch and if if I see some room for improvement, I'll make suggestions. You know, I, I don't like to sit there and hover over a guy while he's trying to learn how to run a piece because that's that's just not how you learn. That that just makes you uncomfortable and, and uh, when you're uncomfortable in a machine, you're not going to learn it. Just gotta let them go, let them, let them learn what they need to learn, and then step in and be like, "Well, I would do this differently, or I would, you know, suggest that you do this and that," and, and let them let them kind of form their own uh, ways of doing things. Also, I mean, because at the end of the day, as long as you're getting production out of that machine, that's all that matters. So what if they're not doing it quite the way you would do it? Hey, as long as that machine's still moving, getting things done, that's all that matters. And I know sometimes I'm not the most productive. There is things that I could be doing different with an excavator, like swinging different or speeding up my cycle times doing certain things. But sometimes there's just only one way of doing something and like you know a lot of times when we're in wet ground and we can only get a truck to one side of the excavator to load sometimes you got to swing the long way around to get the project accomplished that's just all there is to it well hopefully this is close to our last load of concrete here
big ones towards the bottom, so there's no problem with them dumping out. of it's just a bunch of small stuff. fit on one load. Darn it. That's all right. All right, I'll 
finish loading this one and then we'll load another one. Well, there we go. Turned out real nice. They're gonna run their ripper and stuff over this and uh, till it all up, tear all this grass up and level it all out a little better. Um, I got it pretty close with Bobcat, but their field cultivator will do a real nice job at it. So uh, anyways, we're gonna head out. We got another project we're gonna go on to today. So uh, thank you for watching, greatly appreciate it. We'll see you all in the next one. Hopefully you enjoyed this episode.